Yes, people, welcome back to 1894 for a brand new video. Today, myself and Joe are previewing Arsenal versus City. Let's get right into it. Right, Joe, as it stands, we are eight points clear on top of the Premier League. This is our first game of 2022. Some fun facts going into this game. The last nine times we played Arsenal, we've beaten them every single time. The last time we played them, I was there with Jarrett. With Dara was. We were 5 0 up. That's, that was the final score. We beat them 5 0. So we should be fairly confident. But um, as I think you'll agree with me on this one, I think it's fair to say, we'll give them credit, they are a much improved team since then. I think they've got rid of some dead weight or players that are possibly holding them back slightly. Like Aubameyang, I always felt he was a bit of a player that um, maybe felt he was a bit above Arsenal and wasn't given his all. They've kind of given him the cold shoulder. They've suspended him or something like that. And Martinelli's now banging them in. And Emma Smith-Rowe is a player I've always rated very highly. Saka, of course, you, you have to name him. They're a team that's, I think, progressing slowly. And I'm happy for Arteta. I'm happy that he's doing quite well uh, because he, he was good for us. I mean, he's obviously a good friend of Pep. But they are, unfortunately, this weekend, our opposition. And when it comes to being our opposition, I suddenly don't care anymore. We need to beat them. How do you feel about this game? I feel, I mean, I'd feel confident. Why wouldn't I? We're off the back of 10 wins in a row to end off 2021. So you can't really feel anything but confidence. I mean, obviously, I'd rather have players like Rodri available, who's a doubt. Could he play? Possibly. Could even be in the squad. Who knows? But we're just assuming that he's not because Pep hasn't said he's there. But Kyle Walker's returned to training. That's a big boost. Again, unsure whether he'll play, but at least he'll be back. You know, we've we've got this run in the Champions League starts next month, so you know you've got to have players ready for that. And overall, we're in good shape. I mean, the games probably come at a really, really odd time because we've just come off the back of a Wednesday quarter past eight kickoff, going into a Saturday twelve thirty kickoff. I think that is like the smallest gap possible that we could have had, which is a little bit annoying, but. Uh, it's just something you've got to deal with, you know, and, you know, Arsenal aren't in the best shape either. They've had a lot of staff test positive, so they're undermanned in the dugout. So be interested to see how it goes. I think, obviously, putting the staff issue aside, for Arsenal, I think it's possibly come at maybe a good time in terms of form for their players. I, I think, maybe you can correct me, this is their last game, a 5 0 win over Norwich? Yes. Yeah, so they'll be, you know, they'll be, I know Norwich is no great challenge, no disrespect, Norwich, but, you know, they're not really a massive challenge to anyone at the moment. Um, still putting five goals past anyone, Arsenal will feel pretty confident. Now, obviously, we have had Arsenal's number for quite some time. Like I said, the last time we played them, it was 5 0, and we, like, being there that day and seeing the, the whole thing unfold, it was like men versus boys. It really, really was. I'm expecting a different challenge this time. I think they've evolved slightly since then. I think players like Smith Rowe and Saka um, have taken us up much more, maybe, leadership roles. And things are just, oh, there's probably an all round um, bit of a good, feel good factor around Arsenal right now. Now, I don't think they view themselves as uh, in any way a title challenger. I, I think that's fair to say. But they may think they are in with a sniff now with um, signs that clubs like Chelsea and Liverpool are dropping points. They may think they're in with a sniff of getting a top four place. Um, and what a statement it would be for Arsenal to, to take some points off us for the first time in a couple of years at this rate. And I think now, basing off a performance against Brentford, there on Wednesday night, I believe it was. Remember, there's, there's less than 60 hours in between the final ball being kicked against Brentford and the first ball being kicked against Arsenal. So there will be fatigue for us. But based off some of the performances against Brentford, I think players like Martinelli, Saka and Smith-Rowe might fancy their chances to, to really give the likes of Diaz and Laporte a go. I mean, we spoke about it in the review I did with Dara that Diaz and Laporte, they didn't have any catastrophes, but I still felt that a slightly better team and are granted Arsenal are a slightly better team that pose more of an attacking threat, could cause some damage and could score some goals. What do you think? It's a slightly better team and a slightly quicker team. You know, usually our downfall is pace on the counter-attack. Whilst Arsenal may not be the all-out counter-attacking team, we're just going to sit back. They still have that pace. They still have Martinelli and Zaka on the, on the wings to provide that threat. And Martinelli's been really, really good um, since he's coming to the team but we need to ideally be uh, picking up a win I know you want to win all your games and you know wins ideal but the the main focus of the weekend is I mean people are talking about title race over Chelsea and Liverpool play each other we could capitalise on one if not both of them dropping points you know it's a valid point to make that we could extend our lead at the top which you know after this game I'm pretty sure we've played you know the biggest teams away from home already and you know we're only in January so that spells good for the rest of the season but it's come at the perfect time for Arsenal like you said they are on really really good form and they're currently in the top four and would fancy their chances of 
finishing in there. You know, they're still in the Carabao Cup. They could win a trophy there. So, again, it's not going to be as easy. You know, people are expecting not a walkover, but it not to be too difficult because of, you know, the last time we played them and our record against them. But it's not going to be that easy. Their game against Wolves was postponed. So they're coming in a lot fresher than us as well. So, you know, you'd imagine that they'd be up from it from, you know, the word go, really. Yeah, I think they're going to be a different beast to what we've experienced beforehand. Now, I'm not saying by any means that they're on the same level as a game would be for against Liverpool or Chelsea uh, or a big European team, but Arsenal are a, definitely a different beast to what we've seen in, re- in previous years. Arteta has them developing slowly and surely, but from a City perspective, it is obviously the first game in 2022, um, and at least for a couple of hours anyway, if we are to beat Arsenal, we go 11 points clear on top of the table. Then if Liverpool and Chelsea were to draw, which I think is the ideal result for us, is the best one, we we're 10 points clear at, at, by the end of the weekend, which is uh, a fantastic position to be in. Like you mentioned there, it's, um, rival fans saying that the league is already over. Come on, it's it's literally just about to turn January um, tomorrow night at the time of recording. There's no league over by any means. Crazy things have happened. But for City, it's a game to really just build, start building momentum into 2022. Um you know, you want you want to you want to build some momentum, and we have been a second half of the season team for quite some time, uh, and I hope that continues. Two massive games ahead now: Arsenal and Chelsea, and this is the first one. Let's get off to a good start. So, with that much said, let's get over to our predicted starting eleven and see who we chose for this big game. Let's go! Right, so in nets, as I'm sure you could all guess, there is no surprise there. Edison starts for us, same as always. There's not much I can say, but I'm reliable as ever. Uh, rightful, we know Kyle Walker, like Joe said, is back in training, but we don't think he's probably ready to start for Pep just yet, and Cancelo is doing a pretty good job. Like we said in the review against Brentford, possibly a bit quiet, but um, you know he's been so consistent all season, there's no reason to, to not play him uh, against Arsenal. Centre-half support and Diaz, we mentioned as well, they didn't have any catastrophes against Brentford, maybe looked a bit tired. Hopefully they can just improve slightly because it is going to be a bigger challenge to play against Arsenal than it was against uh, Brentford. Then at left back, unfortunately, Nathan Ake, who is someone we were all praising a lot after the Brentford game, we just didn't pick him. We think Pep didn't play Zinchenko against Brentford on the basis that he intends on playing Zinchenko against Arsenal. It is probably tough for Ake to take if that turns out to be the case because he was that good against Brentford. But Pep obviously has a, a sense of comfort with Zinchenko because he's used him a lot more. He knows him a lot longer longer and probably trusts him just that bit more so I'm sure there will be more opportunities for Ake in the future but just in this instance we've gone with Sinchenko Joe the back four kind of speaks for itself really I mean you could throw Walker in but again why bother risking someone who's not match fit who might not even be fully fit just return to training with you know the running that we're going to have especially Chelsea next I'd rather him you know be fully fit and fully available for Chelsea than uh, risk him in this game so fairly self-explanatory really the defense i mean from my memory i can't remember seeing stones name in the list of people spotting in training so i still think he is out so i wouldn't start ake in the back two over laporte and diaz despite them not being particularly great against brentford but uh i think zinchenko is the interesting one here i know he got rested and he probably will play but uh I see people in the comment section on on Twitter all the time saying that he's the one worry um, about players attacking him who have pace because he's not the quickest. He's not, he's not the most, you know, technically gifted either. That's why he plays at left back. And it's something to watch out for, especially if he's on that left, you'd imagine Saka would play off that right and he'd have a tough time against Saka. He's going to have to really be on his game if he starts there. So I could see the point for Ake starting there. I just think... Zinchenko is, for me at least, he's just more consistent. He does give you that sort of seven, eight out of ten every week usually. So you know, it doesn't really matter for me personally. I'd I'd go with either. It's just, you know, I wouldn't risk Walker in this situation at all. I think you're right about Zinchenko. I think if he can drop himself a seven or a ten, it should be fine. Um, but it's kind of up, it's kind of up to now the next three players who we've gone with uh, to. Stop, I suppose, players like Saka and Smith Rowe breaking through the lines and creating opportunities for, for their team. We've got with Fernandinho this time in defensive midfield. Now, I think it's fair to say, Joe, we would prefer Rodri to be playing, but we just don't know about his fitness. Am I right? Yes. So we've got with Fernandinho. Fernandinho, I think we said in the review uh, with Dara for the Brentford game that it, there is obviously major signs now that he's aging and he isn't able to move around the same way he did, but he's still serviceable I think it was the term there he used he's, he's serviceable he's, and he's obviously a massive leader and a massive presence on the pitch so I'd say his role primarily will not be to maybe get forward as much against Arsenal I'd say 
it's a bit kind of like Steven Gerrard in his later days with Liverpool. He would tell you to sit deep and break up attacks uh, and, and use his energy wisely, uh, spend it wisely and not necessarily the way he maybe would have been able to a couple of years ago. And here's where it gets very tricky. We've gone with Bernardo and De Bruyne in the midfield. Gundogan, obviously, unfortunate to miss uh, two in a row now for us anyway because he, he's been quite good all season. But we just think, obviously, Bernardo, similar to Cancelo, maybe didn't hit the same heights against Brentford he has all season. But he's one of those players you, you just can't leave out at the minute. He just is that good. And he offers so much to the team. Even when he isn't playing particularly well, he still offers quite a bit to the team. De Bruyne is a tough one for us, isn't it, Joe? De Bruyne is really a tough one for us. He got his first assist of the season against Brentford. Happy days, but he was quite poor uh, in his all-round play. He was quite sloppy, but he is just one of those players, De Bruyne, that you do find it hard not to pick him because he is capable of those you know, one or two moments magically of the game, even when he's not playing well, like he had with that assist, or else he's capable of dropping a 10 out of 10. So it's very hard to not pick De Bruyne, but uh, I still wouldn't be surprised uh, if Gundogan finds his way into Pep starting 11 somehow. But this is what we predicted. Um, those three, Joe, Fernandinho, Bernardo and De Bruyne. Starting from the base of the midfield, I think, you know, we'd want Rodri, like we said, but Pep is unsure himself on whether he's going to be available. And I think he's in a similar situation to Kyle Walker, where even if he is available, I don't want to risk him. I'd rather play him against Chelsea. I'd rather have him fully available against Chelsea. I think that is going to be the tougher game, regardless of Chelsea's form. You know, we saw how good he was in the game at Stamford Bridge earlier this season, and we've seen how good he is the rest of the season. I just want him fully fit for the rest of the season. I'm not coming here to play Arsenal and risk players for the rest of the season. It's just we're good enough as is. I know we say Arsenal are on good form, but, you know, the team that's on the screen now is just good enough to beat Arsenal. It just is. Otherwise, they wouldn't be playing. Um, And then Bernardo is player of the season. Player of the season. Simply just incredible even even if he does nothing stand out in the game he still affects the game by just being on the pitch it's unreal and then De Bruyne De Bruyne for me this season (laughs) he has been woeful he has been shocking for me by his standards by his standards that is by his standards yes but his standards are because he's supposed to be you know it's the highest paid player at the club and he's supposed to be our best player. And right now, he's nowhere near that level. If I'm picking this... T- I know I'm not Pep. And he probably sees things that I don't. Because I'm not a manager. I don't have qualifications or coaching badges. This, that, or the other. But I'm looking at him and going... He can get an assist or a goal, like you said. And, you know, still get, get something to affect the game. But his overall play is just so sloppy. He just... Dara said it on the Brentford review. He's just... He's turning into Fernandez. He's just trying to Hollywood passes. He's just hoofing it half the time. It's not working. He seriously needs to change something because I feel really bad leaving Gundogan out of this team because he's playing better at the moment. He would be a better option at the moment and I wouldn't be at all surprised if De Bruyne's pushed further forward again to put Gundogan in the midfield because he just has been better this season. But can he turn it around? Can he have a maybe a 9, 10 out of 10 this game? I mean, who knows? It's up for debate, really. He's had a bit of misfortune as well, De Bruyne, which you probably do have to bear in mind a little bit, which is the obviously he had COVID for a while. He broke his face in the Champions League final. I think he's had an, an-, uh, an ankle injury at one stage as well. But that still it doesn't really um, legislate for some of the really below par performances by his high standards. Maybe he just needs to go back to doing basics, what he's really known for, which is his consistent passing um, and his great vision, rather than going for those blockbuster crosses and assists, which he seems to be hell-bent on, on, on getting, but they're just not coming off. And they do look awful when they don't come off. When they do come off, we all go, wow, vintage De Bruyne. But when they don't come off, we're sitting there going, mate, like, give it a rest. But anyway, moving to the front three, this was another difficult selection. We've gone with Sterling on the left. We think he's been quite in form in recent weeks and definitely deserves a start um, over Jack Grealish because Jack Grealish, whilst I do have a lot of time for Jack Grealish and I'm looking forward to seeing the player he develops into, he just isn't it right now. For me, Jack Grealish, I don't think he's ready maybe um, to become that every week starting 11 winger that we can rely on for goals and assists because 
he's still very it's there's definitely massive signs that he's not settled in just yet and he doesn't maybe fully understand his role just yet or what, he, what he's expected to do and that's totally understandable it's totally understandable I think we're going to do a separate video on Jack Rears just to maybe iron out our thoughts on that situation but we've gone with Sterling anyway on the left we've gone with Foden up front Foden was our star man man of the match against Brentford even when he didn't have a 10 out of 10 performance himself he was still probably the best player on the pitch for us um, and he's extremely hard to drop I think he's probably in the top three to five players in the world right now Phil Foden consistently excellent and someone we can rely on at the young age of 21 that's absolutely fantastic Riyad Mahrez comes back in for us as well over Gabriel Jesus who was in our opinion once again or my opinion anyway Joe I can give you his thoughts woeful against Brentford offered nada absolutely nothing and Mahrez has been up there with let, let's be real he's been up there with Bernardo and Cancelo uh, and the likes of them for you know being one of our top servants this year absolutely fantastic you know he's scoring goals and he's creating so no complaints I think he's a starting 11 big game player for us it's a front three Joe that I think is capable of scoring goals and I think it's one we would trust as well what do you think it is an attack you say an attacking five players who can all produce goals and you know chip in with assists that's what we have you know People like to mention we don't have a someone up front as a focal point. You don't need that when you have five players in your team who can score goals. You don't. And that's exactly what we have at the moment. You know, Foden scored the winner against Brentford. I mean, I look back at that Leicester game, that mental Leicester game. Sterling was unbelievable in that game. He ran at people. I think he got two in the end. One of them was a penalty. He was just, he's so good at the moment. He's so Vintage good. You can't Sterling. take him out. Yeah, it's, it, he's gone back to how he used to play, and I'm all for it because he's playing really well. And Mares is, you know, I keep saying I'm unsure about Mares, but he's putting up the numbers and he's, you know, still playing pretty well. So he is the go to man in these bigger games. Again, he should be up there for player of the season. I think come the end of the season, he will be. Obviously, this is, I believe, his last game before he will depart for AFCON. So. You'd say he's pretty nailed on to start this one if you know he's not going to be able to play for the next few. So I'm happy with it. I think it is more than good enough. Again, I wouldn't be surprised if Foden drops out and De Bruyne gets pushed further forward to put in a Gundogan. I wouldn't be surprised at all. But regardless of what Pep goes with, I, I just, it's good enough to beat Arsenal. I don't care about their form. It's good enough to beat Arsenal. If you want to win the league, we've got to beat Arsenal away from home. It's one of them games. They're not in a title race we are. Yeah, I, I think I think the main part of the pitch that I don't rate very highly for Arsenal is their defence. I think they are, you know, very leaky when it comes to goals. And if our front five is in any way feeling it on that morning, I think there should be goals galore. And we know Sterling as well loves a goal against Arsenal, so hopefully he can build on his recent good form. I, I don't see any reason why he can't. Listen, the whole the whole team, as Joe said, is more than good enough to beat Arsenal. They were a really strong team with a really strong bench as well, I'd imagine. Um, I, I wouldn't mind seeing the likes of Cole Palmer maybe get some time on the pitch if things go well for us. But listen, that's something to worry about if we were to be 2 or 3 nil up. Who knows? So that's our starting 11. Leave your thoughts down below. Would you pick anybody else? Would you take anybody else out? Uh, what would you do with start 11 if you were Pep? Before we finish up, the score predictions. Joe, what do you think the score will be? Arsenal versus City. I'm going to go with a 2-1 win. I think Arsenal will get a goal because they just seem to have the firepower at the moment off the back of, you know, scoring five against Norwich. Again, it's Norwich, but that can only provide confidence for whoever they play up front. Uh, so I think they will get one, but I just think we'll be too much in the end for Arsenal. I think we'll extend the winning run to 10 and extend our points gap to double digits. So 2-1, you said? Yeah. 2-1 from Joe, and I'm going to go with a 3-0. I'm just going to go with a 3-0. I don't know why. I don't know why. I've got this feeling 3-0. I think some of our players um, who are doing quite well at the moment, some have a point to prove, and some are just on form. So I trust us to get. I think we'll get one early, and recent history against Arsenal shows that when we score early, it really knocks the stuff in there, them, and they don't really have, or haven't anyway, this far um, more recently, the firepower or the guts to come back and challenge us to for points. So... 2-1 from Joe, 3-0 from me. Let us know your score predictions down below as well. It's a really, really big game. The first of 2022, and it's one we really need to win. So we're really looking forward to it, and we will have a review for you that afternoon, giving you our thoughts on the game as well. Leave a like on the video if you would. It really helps us, and subscribe if you're new. We're so close to 800 now, I believe. We're, we're moving fast now, so do help us on that front if you would. And we'll see you very soon. Good night, God bless.